Hi guys, so I'm just preparing to fly to the UK at the moment. Uh, I'm going back for the summer to renew my passport and things like that. I've done another video about that over on my personal channel, uh, Writer in Rwanda, I'll leave a link below. But before I go, <laughs> I'm back at the Community Music School because um, I'm going to try and tune up the player piano. Now, we were a bit over-optimistic before we said that we were going to put the new strings on and then tune it up, but when it came to tuning, uh, we realised <laughs> it's, it's, it's got a lot of problems. Um, so, a lot of the strings are really badly rusted. Um, sorry, it's absolutely... Ooh, and a shoosh, incredibly hot here at the moment because we've just entered the dry season and it's it's really ramping up the heat. So sorry if I'm a bit ugh. Um, but yeah, we realised that a lot of the strings are very, very rusted and apparently um, the former tuner who tuned it a couple of decades ago <laughs> um, uh, basically tuned it down to the B beneath because he was afraid that the strings were going to snap. Um, so I'm here today to try to see how close to an actual pitch, like proper pitch, we can bring it because um, lots of reasons. Uh, the main one being it's a music school and if you're going to have a functioning piano it needs to be in proper tune so that the students can sing to it and play it with other instruments and everything like that. Um, and also because eventually one day we want it to be in proper tune and so if we start to tune and the strings begin to snap which I think they're going to do um, then we're going to have to just replace the strings we might have to restring the entire piano uh, which would be a hell of an undertaking <laughs> um, but I'm going to give it a go when I started trying to tune it last time round um, I had to stop because somebody was practicing in the other room and I couldn't listen to both pianos at the same time uh, so today Bonino has very very kindly cancelled the lessons today so that I can do this today it's really nice and quiet and I'm going to begin with an old-fashioned tuning fork which should be um, perfectly pitched to A4, so the A on the fourth octave, and I'm just going to try and get that note right. <laughs> and if I can get that note right, <laughs> then we can start on either side, because uh, when a piano is this badly out of tune, uh, tuning apps are a bit more of a problem than a help sometimes, because although it tells you which pitch, it isn't always clear which octave it's on, and it would be very easy to go too far in the wrong direction, and that would also snap strings. So my effort here today, or my aim here today, is to attempt to tune as many of these as accurately as possible and break as few as possible. But I am very, very accepting of the fact that today you're probably just going to hear ping, ping, ping as the, uh, the very rusted strings begin to go. Um, and if that happens, it happens. Um, the owner of the piano is aware of the situation. <laughs> um, that's all we can really do is we're either going to have a tuned piano or we're going to have to buy a new set of strings. So this is most of the kit I've brought with me today. I've got a whole load of tuning hammers. I've got a couple of universal ones. This one was made for us specifically as a square tuning uh, hammer on a ratchet, and that can deal with just about anything. Uh, and we've got a tiny little one, which is sometimes useful. In some pianos, there isn't a lot of room to get the tuning hammer in at either end. Um, and also it's a square tuning hammer as well. So the universal ones have a star and sometimes on really old pianos and old tuning pins it starts to strip the pin so you can't turn it uh, but with a square one that sometimes rescues you. So we've got all the voicing equipment here if we need it and all the tuning equipment here and wire cutters if we break any we can get them off. So wire cutters and there's some needle nose pliers around somewhere. So this is our player piano. It's got a serial number on it here, but it's also got about three different piano brands on it. So we think it's actually been made out of many different pianos uh, and put together to create a player piano. It's got a cute little key in here. And that just goes in here. There we go, to open it so that we can take that off. But yes, you can hear what we're up against. That 
goes down. That's lower than that. Those two notes are the same note. So yeah, it's really, really bad. And so oh, I don't know how this is gonna go. This is definitely gonna be the toughest tuning that I've ever done. So you can see down here underneath, we've even got some verdigris forming. Uh, this is what a new string looks like. And this is how rusted the other strings are. So even if we can get them in tune, they're not gonna sound very bright. So yeah, my honest advice is that this piano needs restringing, but that's expensive and very difficult to do. Because, uh, I mean, it's doubly expensive here because there is nowhere in the region that makes piano strings. So we'd have to send off to Germany. We'd have to get everything imported. Uh, the steel string from the UK, the bass strings from Germany, our friends at Hella Bass. It would be unbelievably expensive because here there's about 100% import tax on anything. So not only do you then have to pay again for what you've paid for the strings, so you've then also got to pay for it to be stored until you can collect it. The whole import system in Rwanda is really difficult. I mean, incredibly expensive, very difficult. So that's why things don't tend to get done <laughs> very often. So like if I was in Europe, I'd just order the strings, I'd get it done. But here, that's a huge undertaking. So we're gonna get started and see how it goes. I'm going to uh, blast the strings with some WD-40, <clears throat> not the pins, but the strings, um, which probably won't make the blindest bit of difference at all, but I don't know, I just, I feel like it's worth a go just to see if it gives it a little bit of extra stretch. Um, I don't think it will, but haven't got anything to lose here and we're learning by experimentation. <laughs> It's WD 40 up. Let's see if we can find that A4. I have to say one thing in its favour is it's the easiest action I've ever taken in or out. It's basically just two screws and the poles are wooden so they're not actually going through anything so you can just lift it up and out without any problems. It's very easy to work with. Okay so this is the state of play at the moment. It's not even registering as a note. So there's this cute little tuner here called E-Tuner, I think. And as you can see, it's picking up my voice. <laughs> Let's try that and see what it says. So that says it's on F4. If we go back to Tune Lab, which is the best piano tuning option that there is. Let's try that on F4. Yes, it is. I'll leave both of these apps below, but it was right. E-Tune was correct. It's closer to F4. I get the sense that if we try and pull this up to an actual A4, it's gonna snap instantly. But at least we know where it is and where it needs to be. Let's have a go. Sorry about the picture quality. I've had to switch over to another phone because I'm using the one that I was recording with to tune because it's got the tuning apps on. Um, thankfully, between eTuner and TuneLab, we now know where it is and where it needs to be. Uh, but if you haven't got any of that, you can use a tuning fork and you just smack it on something, put it between your teeth, and you can hear a perfect A4 um, at the correct hertz. Uh, is that 440? I can never remember. Um, 
and you can bring it up to that on the A4 if you have to. If you're in a bind and you've got no other way to do it, you can do that. But we have got a better way to do it, so let's see if it breaks. Okay, get ready to hear a loud snapping sound. Here we go. Well, that went very easily. Um, surprisingly easily. Hmm. Cycle through every tool in my toolbox. <laughs> Isolate that one sound. Okay, hold on. We know that is correct. Right, okay, so that needs to come up. If you're ever uncertain, use your fingers and pluck. Pluck the string you know is correct, and then pluck the one you're not sure about. And you can hear clearly one is higher than the other. So we know that this one's correct, and this one on the left is lower. But when we're looking at the tuning app, you would be mistaken for thinking that the note is actually too high and that we need to bring it down, which is incorrect, which is why it's always better to use your finger and have a pluck and listen to figure out whether or not you need to go up or down. Now you can see, as I've started to tune up, We've got a second spike here on the left that's just appeared on the screen. And that's the left string coming up into view. It was too far down to register before, but now we're starting to see it coming in. So you can watch it coming into view as we're tuning. And there we are. That's an A. Yeah, I'm definitely not going for perfection here. I just want to try and get all of the keys as close to the right note as possible and we'll deal with everything else another day. <laughs> Yep, it is an H8 key piano. Okay, well, let me get cracking and let's see how it goes. What I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to start from the bass and I'm going to work up. I think it's too far gone even for an overpull at this moment, so I'm just going to start on the bass, work myself up. And if the bottom's out of tune by the time that I get to the top, that's fine because there is no way it can be more out of tune than it is now. <laughs> um, so when I get to the top, then maybe we can do an overpull. Let's just see how it goes today. I've no idea. So out of curiosity, I've just performed the overpull measurement um, and <laughs> it's come back saying some overpull pre-measurements differ from nearby pre-measurements by more than 80 cents. If this is a mistake, nope, nope, definitely not a mistake, definitely true. And even behind, you can see C2 differs by 255 cents. Oh my goodness, that's like over two whole note differences. Oh my goodness, this is going to be an undertaking. But the overpull tool has actually taken correct measurements, so let's give that a go then. Okay, so I already hit a bit of a snag. It was going fine. I did a bit of the bass before, so it's fairly good. But then you can't rely on the tuning app because I'm aiming for F2 and it's telling me it's spot on F2, but we know it isn't because it said all of these are right as well. And listen. It 
it's clearly an octave too high <laughs> but at least we know that so we can bring it down okay so i'm really struggling here because when i take it up to the f that both of the tuners say that it should be at it's clearly too high for that octave but if i bring it down to the f below it's clearly too low <laughs> For that octave i'm not entirely sure what's going on it either means that all of the keys leading up to it are out of tune but it doesn't feel like it because when i when i play them it sounds like it should sound or or there's something wrong with that key and i can't figure out what i definitely can't bring the bass up to another octave above because the strings will snap it is at stretch point at the moment, but this is confusing me because all of the other keys leading up to that F doing all right. Okay, listening to them again, I think that was a bit of a foolhardy comment to make. They're not quite all right. I feel like... Uh, I'm feeling a bit confused at the moment. I'm going to go away, I'm going to have a play with it, and I'm going to have a think about it. Okay, so I've decided to start where I know. Let's get middle C. Okay, Tune Lab's happy with it. It's ever so slightly flat, don't care. That is roughly enough for middle C. And the other tuning app agrees with it. So we've got a middle C and I've also got middle A because it is absolutely middle A. That is absolutely bang on. So we've got A and we've got C so we can construct the fourth octave. Let's construct the fourth octave and once we've got that we can use the notes that we know are okay to harmonise with octaves above and below and bring it to the correct octave. Let's do that. Oh my goodness. My camera isn't working, the piano isn't working, tuning apps don't work. Today is a day. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. We've got C, and this is currently C sharp. This is gonna take a minute. Fantastic, we have got five notes <laughs> out of 88, that's wonderful. So we're doing well on the fourth octave. And then when we hit the A that I tuned with the tuning fork, it's still perfectly in pitch, which is brilliant. So we know that we're on track. Can't say the same about A sharp. All right, guys, we've got one full octave. We've got the fourth octave and it's in place. So we can now use that to harmonize with octaves either side to see whether or not we're on the right one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have left the overpull on for this, which uh, overpull doesn't really work when you're switching about keys. It only really works if you start at the bass and move right up to the treble. Um, but for our purposes today, we just want to get it as close to a legitimate note as possible and break as few strings as possible. Now, I'm probably about to jinx it, but we have the fourth octave in place and no broken strings yet, so hopefully that continues. I don't think it will, but hopefully it does. Okay, I thought that we were making progress, but we're not. Um, I've done about an octave and a half in the midsection and when you play the notes in order it sort of sounds like it's okay, it's passable, but when you start to harmonise with the octave above and below, it's not working. That 
that sounds passable. But then when you try to harmonise, sounds awful, absolutely awful. You should be able to harmonise from B to G here. Not sounding great, I have to admit. Not sounding great. When you play it in order, it sounds okay. But harmonising? Awful. Okay, so a quick check of the app has pretty much confirmed my worst fears. We've got slippage, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've just tuned G3, and it sounds good. It's a little out, but it sounds good. It's doing okay. That's acceptable. But... When we go to G4, which I tuned a few minutes ago, um, here, doesn't sound right. And you can see on the app, it's slipped a long way from the middle line already, and that's within a couple of minutes. Again, I've just tuned this D, and it sounds fine when you're running it. But when you harmonize it, it's terrible, and when you look at the D that I tuned before, you can see it's slipping by almost an entire note. It's absolutely shot. So, yeah. Okay, so now we've got three that we can harmonize. We've got the B2, the B3, and a B4. But when you try, this is what you get. It's even worse when you're going up. It's just totally, totally out of tune again. Just to show you what it should sound like, this is a Nordiska that is roughly in tune. So here we've got the B2, the B3 and the B4. And it should sound like this. So you can tell the difference, even on the Heinzmann that hasn't been tuned in forever, it's doing okay. But sadly, on this one that I've only just tuned now, there really isn't a chance. Okay, so we can confirm that the piano has got pretty bad slippage. Um, I, I feared this might be the case early on. When pianos get to an old age, and this is a very old age, this is over a hundred years old, I think. Um, but basically, uh, the tuning pin is about the length of my finger and it goes into a block of wood along the top of the piano. And over the years, you tune it by tightening it and tightening it. And, you know, over decades and decades, that causes the hole to get wider. So there's no longer any catch on the tuning pin. It's just loose. So as you tighten it up, it just untunes itself again very quickly because there's no friction left in the hole. If the strings are in really good order, what you can do is you can technically turn the piano on its side, put glue into the holes and glue it in tune. Um, it's not really, you know, brilliant solution, but it can work. So the glue gets churned up in the hole and creates a bit more friction. But the problem that we have with this piano is also that the strings are really badly rusted. Uh, they're not in great condition. And so the only suggestion here really the best suggestion is to take off all the strings take out all the tuning pins and put new strings on with new tuning pins because if you take the tuning pins out you have to replace the string um, because there usually isn't enough wire left at the top to re 
attach it to a used tuning pin and that is a major undertaking. It can be done because when we were building our piano we strung the entire piano from scratch so it can be done. It's not like, it's not a complicated job, it's just really laborious and fairly expensive, uh, especially in Rwanda where import is just a barrier to anything that you want to do most of the time. We've also got this problem with this one behind us. That is a Heinzmann Canadian piano. Um, and that's, that's also over a hundred years old now. Um, and that's got slippage as well, but that's, that's got really good condition strings. We bought some glue to fix that one. And I think it's worth fixing that one because the strings are in better condition. We'll just take a quick look now to confirm that. So yeah, this is the Heinzmann. Um, again, it's over 100 years old. This is all one piano, so that serial number is correct. Uh, Heinzmann, Toronto, Canada. Um, and as you can see, these strings are in beautiful condition. For the age, they're fine. They're definitely darkened, but they're not rusting. And that's the difference. So even down here, you can see, I mean, it's a bit dusty. There's some cobwebs in here, um, but the strings are actually in pretty good nick. There's no verdigris on these, there's no rust. Um, yeah. So this piano here is a candidate for gluing, but over here, when we look at the player, and we look at the condition of the strings, which are looking a lot better since I wd 40 would them, um, but they're still not in as good condition. I think my best bet is probably just to call it a day and, you know, let the owner and let Bonane know what I've kind of discovered. Yeah, I'm going to stop C4 that was perfectly in tune a minute ago is now completely out of tune again. Okay, so to give an example of how bad it is, all of the midsection is technically tuned. I tuned it about five minutes ago, I finished tuning it. And uh, this is what we get. Uh... Sad as it is, I am defeated. I am going to pack up and go home and yeah, there's nothing I can do about it today. Uh, it's up to the owner what they want to do next. But anyway, I hope you've learned something today. I hope it's been kind of interesting to see how pianos are tuned and uh, how you decide whether or not to stop <laughs> um, and what can go really badly wrong with them. There's only really a couple of things that can go really badly wrong. This is probably the major one. Well, there are two. That is the major one, the slippage, because then you've got to consider whether or not you want to replace all of the strings and the pins and ooh, that's a big job. Uh, and the second one is a cracked soundboard because in order to get the soundboard out and replace that, you also have to take everything out of the piano and usually restring and repin so that's not an easy thing to fix either um but everything else you can pretty much muddle by with uh, but those are the two big ones and unfortunately this one has got a a fairly life-ending condition. So unfortunately it's a little bit like cars, you know, you become incredibly emotionally attached to a vehicle um, and then it boils down to how much money you're willing to throw at it. Because um, I mean technically it could be, it could be restored, it could be saved, but you've really got to weigh that up against the incredible amount of money, but also once you re restring a piano, I mean, you know, if you've ever put one new string on a piano, you know you've got to tighten that five or six times before it will hold the tuning. So imagine having the entire piano restrung and how long it would take before it was fully holding its tuning and it wasn't constantly going out of tune and, you know, it was fully back to playable condition. I mean, you're talking money and you're talking a lot of time. Um, don't know what else to say. <laughs> Wish I did. <laughs>